uh, uh, what's 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 the point? He done changed his name so much, man. Meta, Meta World. Oh, Meta World Peace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He wore 39 or 37. He wore I think he wore 37. Yeah. I think yeah. he wore 37. Anyway, man, y'all know what it is, man. Talking shit, episode 39. Iceberg <laughs> Flame. Yes, sir. Iceberg Flame. The only man with a cold and a hot name. Already That's know. Him. And you know we're supposed to be ex- expecting, we expecting Drip to fall through. And maybe Spitz too, uh, if we can, if we can get him to grace our presence, that'll be, that'll be dope. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Again, yeah. um, but uh, we just gonna run it, man. Uh, we got a couple things to go oh. over. Oh no, I'm gonna let you play this, and then we are gonna talk about something because it has to do with this. But with this right here, yeah. Okay, because I wanna, I wanna go into, I wanna go into finding more about this too because it's funny when one side gets the story but something totally different happened you know what i'm saying right. so and, and i it's think that's what you go <laughs> i ain't even trying to i ain't even trying to go no further because right. i don't want to take your piece like you know what I'm saying? i think no. that's what you go that, but the thing with me is the thing with me that's fucked up is is that society ex him and his girl been going at it i don't know how long bro mm-hmm. they've been they've been fighting like cats and dogs and shit yo Right, but you know right. this ain't about them though, huh? This Who ain't about them. Hold on. No, it no, it's them. It's it's them, but it ain't about that. That ain't you know. Have you seen? Do you know what happened? No, I don't know. I like don't a, like happened. like last month. All right, so let me let me roll these. I got I got a couple of these to play, and then we're gonna discuss it. That way you can see what what really going on. Cause I know where you, hey. Yes, but that but that ain't even it. Surprisingly, because when I thought when I first heard, that's what I thought it was. It ain't even got nothing to do with that. Cause I was finna, man, I was finna go in and it wasn't even. No, nope. had to go. No, nah, let's check. No, nope, let's check it out real quick. Let me. They got blue face. I got a couple here, of bro. them. And Krishan. They robbing them. <laughs> They got blue face out here, bruh. And Christian. And they robbing them. That's undercover cops. Okay. So now. Veteran move number 11. Always have a plan. This is another angle. Um. Because he got hit by the undercover cops. He was outside of like a chicken and waffle spot in Vegas. Um, face right here, yo. Angle. That's blue face. The, the rest, undercover bro. cops just pulled up on him, bro. They got him. What happened? I don't know what the fuck's going on. Look, that's blue face right there. They don't really know what's going on, but I'm going to bring it down. And Crayshawn. They just got his ass and threw him down. Get the fuck out. Head up. Yo, chill out. Everybody relax. What is he doing? What did he do? But what did he do? No, he does not. What did he do, man? Come on, like let's just like y'all y'all could have talked to him. He was, he was gonna run away. Like come on, man. Hey, hey, yo, y'all y'all didn't need to. Come on, that's just the same dispensary that. <laughs> nah, nah, that. No, that's not that's not the right way, bro. Like, come on. What's going on, guys? He's always here. What's going on? I, I, they told me he has a warrant. Yeah, but he's always here. I know that. That's ridiculous. That don't matter if you got a warrant. It don't matter how much you had a place. <laughs> if you got a warrant, that makes them all the more susceptible to come there. No, that's bullshit. That's bullshit. Literally wasn't doing nothing, man. Okay, now I don't know if... Rapper Blueface has been... So my wife got me this week. Rapper Blueface has been arrested in Las Vegas on suspicion of attempted murder and more. This is the last one, and we're gonna talk about it. Bust down, bust it, bust it, bust down on the gang. Oh. 
Blueface. Blueface, whose real name is Jonathan Porter, was arrested on warrants following a shooting that took place October 8th in Las Vegas. The Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department released a statement saying, detectives apprehended the rapper around 2.40 p.m. and were set to book him on warrants for attempted murder with a deadly weapon and discharging a firearm at or into an occupied structure. Blueface's girlfriend, Krishan Rock, took to IG following his arrest to show her support after many online say it's time for her to leave him. She even changed her profile picture to his mugshot. Stop playing left me when I went in. I'm going to court tomorrow and that's all that matters. So he coming home. I don't know what y'all talking about. For more on this ongoing story, head to Billboard.com. This is Billboard News. Well, she ride or die for that nigga. I will tell you that shit, bro. Yeah. So, yeah. this nigga... Uh, Allegedly, oh, I lied. We got a rapper who goes more. by the name of Blueface appeared in court this morning. Police arrested Jonathan Jamal Porter yesterday at Lolo's Chicken and Waffles at the Hughes Center near Flamingo. A warrant was out for his arrest following a shooting that happened last month near Las Vegas Boulevard and Sunset. Porter's bail was set for fifty thousand dollars. He is due back in Note. court in January. Fifty thousand. Oh, we are the first right? to bring you the story. Okay, that's our next one. Um, so evidently this is what ha this is I'm gonna I'm try to find some more info on it too and I might come back later on during the week I might drop some little things some little tidbits and stuff like later on in the week but um, supposedly he was he somebody was shooting at him in Vegas and he shot back but from the camera angle with, with, with what People, of course, like with anything, when any first shots are fired, nobody's going to get that unless you're just watching it or expecting it to happen. But when you right. first hear shots, then people grabbing their phone, and when they grab their phone, they got the they got the hitting it, right. you know on him. They that he was shooting back, so all the photos make it look like he's shooting at somebody for no reason. That's not the case. Right. Niggas was shooting at him; he was shooting back. So right. that's why I said note on the bail because. Everybody knows that police and law enforcement and all that kind of shit. Nine times out of ten, they know more. Believe it or not, whether or we not, whether like we, whether or not, uh, I need to get this blunt in me, boy. Whether or not we believe it or like it or not, the police know more than we think they do. So they right. always know really what's going on. You know what I'm saying? So that's why the bail was only fifty thousand. Because if it was murder, like he was just shooting at somebody and hit him, and they had him all blue face, did it? That bail would have been that bail would have been a million dollars. Million? You you feel me? <laughs> a million, a million. <laughs> so a fifty thousand dollar bail. That means he getting out of jail five thousand dollars. He's coming home. Five thousand plus a turnkey. Facts. Hell and it's gonna get you up out of there. So anybody who deal with law knows knows that. So. That's the situation on this, but this is how the media is spinning this shit. Right. But what I was talking about was him and that girl and all this damn fighting, yo. They accept that shit, but Chris Brown and Rihanna, they drug that motherfucker through the mud, bro. I don't get it. Bigger star. I don't get it. Mm -hmm. I, believe, I, don't, I, I believe it's only because he's a bigger... Chris is a bigger star. No. Um... I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't. It, 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 it. You don't think so? Any man, any woman. I don't give a fuck. I don't give. I don't give a damn if, if it's if it's if it's two homeless people. As a homeless man and a homeless woman, I don't give a damn if it's Barack and, and Michelle. It, it don't matter, bro. True. To me, True. It, it don't. Now you know everybody <laughs> Sorry else had it. Steam, y'all. You know, if it's Wilma and Barney and all that, Wilma and, and Fred and, you know, that, but it, no. And that's what shocked me was like, hold on, they get the fight. And it's out there every time they do, mm -hmm. you know, you post the shit, you got a black eye, you got a busted lip. And, you know, they done posted the fights. They been fighting in the street and shit, man. Come on. Come on, man. But that's how society is, though. They pick and choose or basically, you know, what they want to let slide or, uh, uh, and, and what they want to just go hard on, man. It's, so. and, and it's what's the name if you ask me. It's really all, how can I put it? Like, 
It, I mean, it, it's straight to bullshit. You already know that. But it's yeah. all, it's all, uh, I'll say, manipulation. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's a mental manipulation, it's a mental mind fuck that they be doing to us because Man. they know they 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 basically what it the the seed that it plants is that you can get away with it. You just gotta yeah. know what to do. Or right. you gotta know how to do it or whatever. Like, you know what I'm saying? Instead of like this shit wrong, period. Everybody right. who who does this yeah. Or, or yeah, anybody anybody gets the same treatment. They don't show that. Right. That's the stance that it should be. Is that this shit is just wrong? Period. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't give is. You don't need to be here no no motherfucking woman. I don't give a damn who you is. But you know what's crazy? And I'm gonna just be honest. I'm gonna just I'm gonna be. A lot of people ain't gonna like this shit, but fuck them. The other people do it, and so yeah, they yeah. they gotta have a they gotta have a gray area. If you understand Man, what I'm it. saying, because they do it. Damn closet and all that other shit, man. Come on. Always notice there needs to be a gray area because they move in that they move in them realms too. Yeah. A lot of things. You know what I'm saying? A lot of shit that they try to that they fuck with us about. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So. <clears throat> Hell yeah, man. But yeah, so free blue face, man. Blue face, baby. <laughs> yeah. Uh he gonna it's up when you get out of there, though. Right, especially, especially for <laughs> you, what you. A whole mixtape ass when you get out. <clears throat> Man, you might have fucked the police twenty. <laughs> you feel me? You feel for me? Real, bro. Yeah. So fuck the volume twenty point seven. Volume twenty. <laughs> yeah. So and then yeah. that, now, moving on, man. This now, hold on, right let me here. let me say one more thing go too, ahead, man. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> if I'm sitting out there like that, and white dude just come snatching me up, I ain't hear nobody say police or nothing. You didn't, nigga, I'm finna get y'all the business. Plain clothes, I'm finna get y'all the business, bro. And you know what's hey, funny? Yeah. You right, you right, because that was handled wrong. Right. Totally wrong. You're supposed to announce yourself as a as an officer of the law. He's supposed to walk the up, guy said it. show that yeah, badge. The guy sh- right. The guy said y'all handled it all wrong. D- yep. Facts. He wasn't lying either, because all he he, bro, and you he he, he looked like a regular he, nigga, he bro. No, yeah. You he, he said it was it was no threat because he was just sitting there. He went. Y'all creeped up on him and swing him up. Yeah, he's sitting there looking through his phone. Yeah, that's. Oh, boy, but they do us like that, dog. I I, I done seen them videos too big. They they go slightly to the white folks. They're like, hold a whole fucking conversation. And and this motherfucker didn't just did anything under the sun. Oh yeah, they gonna sit there. They gonna sit there and talk to him. Yeah, put guns on him and all that shit. Come on, man. But yeah, we what's what's, what's up next, yo? Man, and you right, but you oh. and you right. I'm glad you brung that up, though. I'm glad you, I'm glad you brung that up because that's a key point, bro. He, he, and dude thought they was robbing him. You hear, dude? Oh, they robbing him. They robbing him because the people, the officers, did not even attempt to distinguish themselves. Or nope. to identify themselves. Yeah, they niggas thought it was a robbery. Because yep. it looked like he was I'm grabbing sure at his said. chains and shit. For real. For real, though. It looked like he was digging in his pocket and all that shit, too, man. Come on, man. Bro. Y'all got to do that. Y'all, y'all please me. Y'all got to do better than that, bro. A lot they fucking better. stand up. Come on, man. man they let y'all lie. slide with a whole bunch. But, 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 no, nah, you can't be just going snatching people up like that, man. That's Cause that, you better believe if if he if if he he'd have had if he'd have had a click with him, oh they'd have got done in, bro. I'm telling you, they'd have got their ass beat the fuck up. That's what. That's why they didn't do it with a whole bunch of people around him. That's exactly why. I believe that's exactly why, man. Well, man, man, free blue face, man, man. Moving on, man. 
This is an, this is another something that's eating at my soul, man. When I watch this video, oh yo, this is crazy right here, yeah, man. Man, y'all kick back and see if y'all can stomach this shit. Of the brutal assault of a man named Mr. Hobbs in a Camden County jail. Now, lawyers are involved. Press conference is happening today. There is an official investigation of GBI. They have been notified. Let me remind you of the footage. There are multiple videos. We are now in receipt of all of them. I will give you the update as we have it today. We got a couple. Let's put up the picture too. of that jail facility in Camden County. Now remember, Camden County is in deep south Georgia. It is so south that literally many of the residents actually commute to Florida to go to work. Mm -hmm. That is how south Camden is. This incident occurred at the Camden County Jail in the state of Georgia. Several officers beat and choked Mr. Hobbs. Other individuals who were incarcerated had to jump in to save him. Since then, our reports have spread across the entire internet. It's gone viral, all right? Um, and you will recall, we received more graphic footage of the attack. Here it is. Okay. He's in his cell. This is a suicide watch cell. Individuals dealing with mental health crises. He is attacked. There is no provocation. Look at that. Look how look how they socking on him. They have no interest in subduing him, in arresting him. They only have an interest in beating him. Okay? That's it. And they continue to do so. Look how they ramming his fucking leg. And he goes shit. off camera. Where Damn. outside they continue to do the same thing, beat him even more. You're a simp. What? The brutality, the vicious nature of their criminal actions should have landed them in jail immediately. Anybody else would have been incarcerated look, for multiple felonies with a video like that. And then they put him in a wheelchair and throw him inside. Look, look how they ramming his fucking legs. Like, look how they ramming him. Limp body, unable to move. To add to the egregious activity you just saw. Look like they broke his leg. They would not allow him any medical treatment for 15 days. They charged him with felonies against other officers. He was in for a nonviolent offense. All of this happened while being incarcerated in Camden County Jail. Now, we have more info from those who are close to the source. Let's put up the picture of him and his family. I want to remind people of the humanity of this victim. After the beating, Hobbs was charged with nine counts of assault, battery, and obstruction of an officer. The 41-year-old was held in isolation <coughs> about 15 days after the unprovoked attack. Mr. Hobbs said he did not receive medical attention. Let's put up the attorney for Mr. Hobbs, Harry Daniels. Harry Daniels is a civil rights lawyer and a dear friend of mine. He's on the case. He's actually in Camden County today. Spoke to him earlier. The Camden County Sheriff, Jim Proctor, has now launched an official investigation after the release of the second report. Now remember, this happened back in September. This happened back in September, and it is finally getting a level of investigation. GBI, Georgia Bureau of Investigations, they are now involved. Indisputable received a statement from the department. A video published on social media is a portion of an incident that occurred at the Camden County Sheriff's Office jail 
has the public questioning the actions of the corrections officer. This investigation will include all recorded video from the time the inmate entered the facility on September 3rd, 2022 until his release on September 30th, 2022. Two people who work or have worked at the jail wrote to Indisputable directly. Now remember, Indisputable talked to Mr. Hobbs directly as well, he gave us significant insight as to what actually happened. So here's what the anonymous corrections employees said to us. There was a white female sergeant that reported a beating in that same jail and it was swept under the rug. She would not let it go because she took her position seriously and she saw a miscarriage of justice. She was fired for trumped up reasons. A former corrections officer in the jail also reached out to us and said, I was fired. I was the only witness to speak up for police brutality that I witnessed on my ship. I witnessed three of my fellow officers illegally strip search a man outside of the strip search policy. He was fired, right? We're gonna continue to bring you the updates to the story, but obviously there's a sea of corruption here. And as I have said before, typically when you have individuals who are willing to operate outside of the lines with a group of people, that's a cultural issue. That's not an independent issue. This is how they operate. Share your thoughts here. It's a mafia. I'm disgusted. Yeah. It is, you've done the people's work yet again because we need to see more of it. I did not want to watch it, but I made myself and everybody needs to look at it. You want to talk about Ukraine? Okay. But let's talk about South Georgia as well. This is torture, as you said, felony assault, obstruction, uh, every bit of it. Every like bit of it leg. needs to be ferreted out and needs to be handled at the highest level with the harshest punishment available. Right. Lightsabers are finally a real. That's crazy, y'all. Mm, mm, mm. Man, man, man. Any or driving without a license. Come on, y'all. Driving without a license, man. Get the fuck out. Where do they do that at, man? Ruffy Drib in the crib. Yeah. Nothing chilling, man. You see that shit? So what happened? They beat the... Here, I'm going to let it play real quick. We are the first to bring you the story of the brutal assault <coughs> of a man named Mr. Hobbs in a Camden County jail. Now... Lawyers are involved. Press conference is happening today. Mm -hmm. There is an official investigation of GBI. They have been notified. Let me remind <laughs> you of the footage. Yeah, they were socking this up. Is yeah, but you know so crazy about that? Boy, no one, boy, not, not one of them motherfuckers saw the talk. You say, no. You say, no. No one tried to hit with him in the street, toe to toe, just that by they so. Hell no. Man, no. No, it's it, 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 it takes four of them to do this type of shit. Stop All they, they always want to holler, stop resisting. Here, what is that? 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 There are multiple videos. We are now in receipt of. And let me ask you something, bro. Talk to me. If they put him in that, okay. why are they going back to put handcuffs on him then? Thank you. Thank you. What was the reason then for grabbing him or getting him or have, he have dressed? Yep. Why are you pulling him out to put handcuffs on? Him? Well, only thing I can I can draw from it is that they said this was a suicide watch tank, and so maybe they was mm -hmm. taking him from there to the cell. I don't okay, know, but, but other than that, all this ain't necessary. None of this shit is necessary. No, I'm honest. I'm I'm still trying to. The, why they put him in a suicide? I don't. 
that shit is just crazy. Right. They all of it, it is. All of it is, bro. All of it is. You is not lying, bro. This shit is so fucking weird, and none of it makes sense. Man, that's crazy, yo. None of it makes sense. Is it a sale? This is a source. Huh? I hope they name that jail after you, bro. When you get through there, they've been doing that shit to you. That shit ain't that, bro. No, nah, it ain't. And hold on, behind this, one of those dudes damn near broke his hand. Uh, I saw that one of them guys fucked his hand up beating that dude because he. They said he um he threw a punch at him and missed and hit the damn wall. <laughs> That's what he get. It probably was that little, little bitch right there. The little dude back there trying to get his little blows, little young ass, dope Opie Taylor. Ain't he? They probably came to him wow. before they, they probably came to him before it started saying, Hey man, you wanna beat up a nigga? Watch how no, he watch how he ram him in there, bro. That's five. And they got nine counts against the officer. Where the other four at? That's only five. Didn't even help him. Fucking crazy, dog. Georgia. Shit nuts, man. <clears throat> We're gonna keep on um following that shit too. We're gonna bring that we're gonna bring you all the rest of this shit. Sharon Reed looking like Beyonce's sister. I'm sleep. Who Sharon Reed? You like her? She was like Beyonce's sister. I ain't she or somebody? Cry. Stop. Yeah, Before she you do just kind of. She a little over dramatic for me. Yeah. Some of the things she was saying about something didn't didn't uh, didn't sit right with me. I ain't really appreciate it. I think it was about Kanye. I think it was about Kanye. She jumped on that. She jumped on everybody else's. Bandwagon about Kanye or something else. Like and we said, though, that goes. It's it's a lot of people that then came off of that, and everybody was quick to jump on that brother from the start. We said it right here. Mm-hmm. Everybody up on that from the start. You yeah. gotta understand. You gotta have the understanding and knowledge of the situation. After everybody went and heard. Or went and watched and, and got their views or listened or whatever. And yeah, everybody, everybody turning back now. Mm-hmm. You know. Yep. That the idea is though. You you hear something and before you try to investigate that shit for yourself, you already joined your conclusion and made your judgment. Join the mob. Yeah. They didn't join the lynch mob. Huh? That's what it was. Yep, they didn't join the lynch mob. <laughs> I don't join no lynch mob. I got I'm watching from the window, nigga. Seeing like the fuck I said, going on. That, <laughs> like I said on that Facebook, <coughs> man, all my brother needed to do was have somebody that could school him on public speaking. You know, mm-hmm. you, you, it's what you, it's, it's not what you say, it's how, how you, you say it. it, right? How you say it, yep. That's it. How you and say I it? And I promise, if he'd have cleaned that, if he'd have had somebody help him clean that shit up when he said it, it wouldn't have went the way it did, man. Because it, because like like they should, look, we gonna get to this too, but it's further down. We gonna get to this too, but Dave Chappelle laid it all the way out when he told that oh, nigga. When he yeah, told that gonna... nigga, he said, "Hey man, he said there's two words you don't put it right next to each other." He basically giving him the formula right there. He giving him the public speaking formula right there. He right. told him you can say whatever you and he did it. He said whatever he wanted, but he did not put them two words together except for when he said it and he had that little piece of paper at first and he said, man, listen, he laid that shit out for him. All you got to do is watch. Pay attention. <laughs> but, uh, man, let's check this. this. This is, I don't know what this is, but from the looks of it. Yeah, let me see. Right. It's something crazy and it just happened. Like, we try to stay up to date with y'all, man, bringing y'all some of this stuff that y'all might not see. You know what I'm saying? I know y'all looking at y'all phones a lot and looking down and looking on the face on the Facebooks and the TikToks and shit. 
You know what yeah. I'm saying? But uh, it's some it's some real shit going on out here. We just try to keep y'all abreast, man, of some things that's that's pertinent that's going on, man. So. Get right to some breaking news this morning out of Moscow as classes are canceled for the University of Idaho today following the deaths of four students. Nicole Hernandez live in Moscow right now. Nicole, you've been there for an hour or so now. What are you hearing from police this morning? <laughs> So Tim Channing, what we know right now is that police do still have this house here blocked off with crime tape investigating here. We have one person also kind of manning the scene, making sure nobody messes with the area. Yeah, we see uh, his what mall we know is back yesterday, there. This house right here is where police found four bodies. And later that day, University of Idaho confirmed that they were U of I students there. So take a look at this breakdown here of the timeline that we have of how things happened. About 1 p.m. we heard reports of a murder investigation or excuse me, homicide investigation near the college campus. An hour later, the school put out an alert on social media. It said Moscow PD is investigating a homicide on King Road. They asked the community to stay away from the area and shelter in place as a precaution. Around three in the afternoon, Crum 2 arrived in Moscow. Neighbors said most people living in this area are part of U of I Greek life or are students. At around five in the evening, the Moscow Police Department confirmed they had found four people dead. But it wasn't until late that night that they confirmed the victims were students. The University of Idaho also said Moscow police do not think there's any active threat at the moment as they continue their investigation. And again, classes yeah, are canceled what? today for University of Idaho students. They will resume classes tomorrow. In Moscow, Nicole Hernandez, Crum 2 News. Now, last night, the University of Idaho released a statement. President Scott Green says, in part, an event of this magnitude can understandably have significant impacts on those left behind. As vandals, we must come together and lift each other up. He also is letting students know that there are several support options available, including drop-in counseling. Well, we will continue to follow this developing story here on Up With Creme. You can also find the latest information on our website, creme.com, and inside the Creme 2 app. The Bell Davis. Man. Now we do want to get right to some breaking. We might have to check up on that because that shit was was that shit was like vague as hell. The Bell Davis Jr. Devin. You know what I'm saying? Like they didn't say nothing. I want to know. We we need to know. Man, they be playing with us for real, man. <laughs> I think it's, said, you think so, man. I think it. it they, yeah. they, they, is, is, is. They be playing with us, man. They, they got, they let us know what they want us to know. Like they be covering up so much shit, you will never get the true story or nothing. Man, you ain't lying, cause I think this shit got to be some drug related shit or, or something, bro. If it ain't drugs, and if it's some serial killer type shit. Or some motherfuckers going around doing some stupid shit. Y'all motherfuckers need to let motherfuckers know. Not know we right. gonna get back and let y'all know ain't no threat. If it ain't no threat, then let motherfuckers know what the fuck going on. Right. 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 Like, give us some kind of, you know, give us some kind of motherfucking inclination of what this shit might be. Because they know it's motherfuckers that's going to feel safe just off of what they ever they lied about. Who not going to question shit. Right. This shit's so crazy, dog. Who just going to feel safe with whatever they say. Oh, okay. Well, since they said that, everything must be okay then. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like we supposed to just, no, nah, like, it's motherfucking, got- it's motherfucking neighbors. <laughs> There's right there. <laughs> There's probably at least 60% of motherfuckers who think like that, if not more. Man. Yeah, there we go again with that first on the, your first person there is trying to get the story out and give half the shit, yo. Right. Take your time. Bullshit. Let us know what's going on. That shit's so crazy, dog. So we're going to have to, we're going to have to keep up with that one. Shit, man. But it just happened two days ago, so I mean, honestly... Something else need to be something else should should already have come out. So we definitely have some uh, have an update on that one uh next week because that's wild as hell, man. Like 
the other two dudes dead now? Uh, oh, I'm about to. We about to play here. We about let's see. Lavelle Davis Jr., Devin Chandler, and Deshaun Perry. The three young men were star football players for UVA. Yep. Talented, bright young men with great futures ahead of them, no doubt. Police say the student athletes were shot on board a bus just as they returned from a school field trip to see a play right here in D.C. The college football community is certainly mourning this incredible loss tonight. And we're also learning more about that suspect in this case. Our Adelia Gonzalez joins us now. And D, I understand you spoke with the suspect's father? Pretty remarkable that he just spoke to reporters. The sound just coming into our newsroom just a short time ago. Chris Jones Sr. actually apologizing on behalf of his son. He says he last saw his son a month ago when he came home to do laundry. But what this dad revealed about his son is indeed eye opening. 22 year old Christopher Darnell Jones Jr. reportedly overcame a troubled childhood. Dad admits oh. his son struggled after dad left the family. The father and son had no contact for 11 years. Still, the 22-year-old seemingly overcame his challenges, making the National Honor Society attending UVA. But take a listen to the last conversation his father said he shared with his son. He was real paranoid when I, when I talked to him about something. He wouldn't tell me everything. He said uh, some people was picking on him or whatever. Uh, he didn't know how to handle it. I just told him, no, just don't go to school. Don't pay him no mind. Do what you got to do. Come on out. You only have one more year. My hearts go out to their family. Uh, I don't, I don't know what to say, uh, except I'm sorry uh, on his behalf. You can mm. hear it there. Just a loss for words and apologizing on behalf of his son. And of course, that community is still heartbroken over this loss. The suspect's father said he hasn't spoken to his son just yet, but he hopes to soon. And Zoe, I do have to tell you that I spent time today reaching out to the victims, families and friends. And I just spoke to Lavelle Davis's dad so suspect a couple of hours uh, ago. He told also, me his son was a remarkable young man. He described him as a diamond in the rough. Mm. So, so heartbreaking. Delia, thank you. So. Let's have a little talk. One veteran. Are you still bullying, man? It's bullying. And that shit hit harder now these days with all this social media and shit and this fucking internet and this fucking technology. I'm just, right. I'm just saying, like, I, I, that means that the dude, the suspect, the suspect, is part of this part of the school too and is an honor society did i i hear did i hear that right y'all yeah yeah the suspect is an honor student bullying and the football player been bullying his ass yeah <clears throat> that's what it sounds like to me that's what I'm taking from it too, man. But I'm just, I'm just taking back at society, like you know what I'm saying. At, at, at the way. I don't know, man. Drip, drip, put it on. Drip, put it out there in words that I could can't even in better words than I can ever even put, man. It just hit harder. Like he said, this bullying shit hit harder nowadays, man. Y'all, uh -huh. but I think everything, most honestly, man, this shit starts at the crib, man. You gotta yeah. teach your kids how to. You gotta teach your kids how to, how to maneuver right. around that. Or you, you need to be teaching them how to join on niggas so they can make niggas who, who thinking they right. bullying them how they can, get their ass, make their ass feel small. Don't be letting your kids go to go to school without learning how to join. For real, but see that shit don't mean shit when the whole fucking uh, when the whole fucking internet, yo, all your like. Cause you gotta understand, like, it's bigger. Like the internet is is bigger than what they even like. What they even picturing it as? They they just look at, like you gotta understand. They probably got their own little Facebook. They feel like or whatever they be on for the whole college campus. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So like. If it's motherfuckers who don't even know you personally, but know how hard you get roasted, 
and then they see you in the street and they talking that same shit, like you gonna get tired of that. Yeah. yeah. And these is college kids too. This is not this is not high school should, or middle figure, school. It, these are adults. Right. These are young adults. So it had to, to me, it had to be pretty hard then for that dude to do some shit like that. And that's just think, like, cool. like, like he in a dorm with her, and he got caught doing some embarrassing shit, and yeah. they won't let him go, and they just keep going on and on about it, and making memes and posting that shit, and then they motherfuckers he don't even know, blowing down on him saying that same shit. Yeah, that's gonna like way make a motherfucker go crazy. Yeah, and I believe that's what happened. Mm -hmm. I remember one time I got into it with these motherfuckers in this group on Facebook, and I was lighting they ass. They was coming for me like, man, they was coming for me so hard, dog. Like, mm -hmm. like to where they had even made me mad. Like I'm thinking like. How the fuck did these did I let these motherfuckers who I don't even know that it might not even be real let me get this mad? Like you know what I'm saying? Right, like right, like get to this point. Like, yeah, really wanting to like I wish I could see one of these motherfuckers right now type shit. Right. Like you know what I'm saying, like posting pictures of my mom, roasting her, like, and I don't even care. Like you can roast me all you want to, but like you leave my mom out of this, but like, right? Brutal. They be brutal with that shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, and it wasn't even like I was just mad because like I know I was tearing their ass up, but they was just like all just ganging up on me. It was so many of them, like, right? You know, I couldn't even. It probably was like it was like fifty of them, fifty to one. Damn. You know that's what I'm saying? Wow. Like, yeah. No, like to where it wasn't no way I could have won. You know what I'm saying? And then they are like being extra disrespectful about my mom and shit like that. Like right. I was mad as hell. And then I had this type of thing like nigga, why is you mad? You don't even know these motherfuckers and they don't even know you. Right. And what you're saying ain't even true, but like I'm mature enough to know that like this nigga, he, he was only like 18, 19 years old. Yeah, probably a youngster. I'm going to put this trap that I bet they'll leave me the fuck alone in. <laughs> and then he probably, uh, he probably ain't even, he probably just pulled it out trying to scare him. And then they probably jumped on him trying to take it. Like, yeah, who, and yeah, it, I was just thinking about that in my head. Like, how did that actually go down? Like, yeah, like, he probably, like some video. I need to see footage or something. Yeah, he probably ain't even trying to, like, that, that shit was all because of some bullying. Had, yeah, like, yeah, that shit. And then, like, but college players, though, these college, they not, they not, this not high school, this college, these grown-ass men, these young men. You ain't a grown-ass man until you turn 26. I mean, I give you that. I definitely give you that, but that's why I said before, young adults. They're not high schoolers. Yeah. They they should have their emotions in check enough to know yeah, that, nah, man. They, You know they don't. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Because you, you think about how what your mind was like at 25 compared to what it is now. Yeah. Yeah. Most definitely. Sometimes you be ready to risk it all, nigga. Really yeah, for some stupid ass shit too. Yep, just for just for whatever, for respect, or for name, or for whatever, you be ready to risk it all. You right? Just cause you horny, or just cause you mad, or just you cause you. Just... <laughs> yeah, yeah. You yeah cause... Like you know what I'm saying? You were going some shit raw mm -hmm. and get a bitch pregnant, and then by the time you grow, you be looking like I should have never even fucked that bitch. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That type shit. You ain't lying, man. That shit, man, but shit. Listen, all my peoples that's young, y'all. High school age, young age, everything, man. Y'all try to control these emotions, man, and think about the future, man. Think about what's going on, because these people ain't playing. 
Every, you ain't you ain't getting away from nothing these days. All these cameras and shit around. This ain't the seventies, man. You gonna be on film, ASAP. Yeah. You you go. Some, somewhere, all these people pulling out phones and shit. Facts. Somewhere you on film, man. So, man. Right, let's After see a noose. Is was left at a construction site where the Obama Presidential Center is being built. Tonight, a $100,000 year. reward offered to help find the person responsible. CBS 2's Charlie DeMar live near the site on the city's south side for us tonight. Charlie? And Joe, good evening. Construction workers we spoke with believe that that noose was found in the foundation or basement of this construction site. And shortly after that noose was found, those workers say they were called in for a meeting and quickly told to put their tools down. A Chicago police officer left the Obama Presidential Center construction site Thursday afternoon with a bag that appeared to have a rope inside. <laughs> Leaders with the Lakeside Alliance, a group of minority-owned construction companies behind the project, say a noose was found earlier in the day. Construction worker Rico Pineda believes it was found in the foundation of the site. Well, they found a hangman's noose, you know, down in the basement. Yeah, I am very upset, very angry, you know. Workers were off the job early as construction has been halted until additional anti-bias training is completed. The construction site is secure, which is why Pineda questions how the noose got in. There is That's going to be a dog-ass library, boy. And, um... Yeah, I mean, you need see that ID shit? to get inside. You need, you know, to get, you know, uh, signed in and everything. The only other way you could get in is just hop the gate. That was it. So that's the only two possible ways that I see it. One, two, three. Ground broke on the presidential center in Jackson Park, September of 2021. In June, Obama visited the construction site to thank workers, and he even touted the diverse workforce. Not only some outstanding contractors, uh, but also uh, one of the most diverse workforces that we've uh, ever seen on a major project. The Obama Foundation See how they said had the in little statement, Chinese girl on the this hand. shameless act of cowardice and hate is designed to get attention and divide us. Our priority is protecting the health and safety of our workforce. Everybody's a union worker here. And now, you know, just for somebody's mistake, one mistake, now everybody's laid off. Now, the Chicago Police Department says they are aware of this incident. The construction company behind the Presidential Center offering an $100,000 reward for any information that leads to that person who placed that noose. Reporting live tonight in Jackson mm. Park, Charlie DeMar, CBS 2 News. Jesse Smollett did it. <laughs> Not yet. Yeah, Jesse did it. Not yet. He said, "I'm. He said, I'm gonna get y'all." He said, "I got something for you. Let's go viral. Come on, Barack. Let's go viral." <laughs> nah, man. Y'all motherfuckers need to stop with that shit, man. Ain't no. Listen, man. You racist motherfuckers, man. That does not fucking scare nobody. Nah. No. No. <laughs> nah. It's, it's not like, like like them cats that write them little shits on the bathroom wall, yo. Yeah. <laughs> facts. It's facts. It's just yeah. like that. It's just like pfft. Molly was here. Get the fuck out of here, yo. Yeah, I beat your ass. Here. Get the hell out of here, yo. Putting swastikas up and shit. Carving them into the walls and shit. Right. That, oh, dumbass. That don't fucking scare nobody, man. We, nah. we ain't tripping on that shit. Fuck y'all. They're right. Fuck you niggas thought, dog. Oh, boy. Let's do another one just for just for just for drip. Why? American Legion members came think, dressed like this. Gonna cry. For Halloween party, it's called blackface. No matter no. how many stories we do, no matter how many times people get caught up in this madness, still individuals no. will attempt it. This went so down in New York. The jockeys. commander of the American Legion resigned. 
after a Halloween party over the weekend included two people dressed in blackface costumes. This is the most egregious blackface yeah. photo. Let me remind everyone of why blackface is in fact offensive. During the mid 19th century, white performers would sometimes put black shoe polish on their face to exaggerate features and to suggest that black people were less than human. They would perform in ways that seemed animalistic and discuss through the art of theater how black people were inferior and they would call these minstrel shows. Remember black people when they were allowed to step foot on stages, they could not step foot on a stage with their natural black skin. Right. They had to also put on blackface by mandate of the protocol because white audiences would be offended by their natural black complexion. All right, let's put it up again. There you have it, utterly insane. Now let's go to the leader, Post 556 hosted the Saturday Halloween party sponsored by the Carol Rod and Gun Club. Afterward, the club shared photos that show two people dressed in white clothing with red vests and hats and carrying prop lanterns. The two individuals also are seen wearing black gloves and black face coverings with enlarged lips and eyes. They're supposed to be lawn jo jockeys. Ooh. Commander Jim Rossing of Samuel L. Derby post 556 stepped down on Tuesday. Rossing served only a little over a year. You know why you had to step down, sir? Because you lack leadership and integrity. Somebody comes to your American Legion Lodge dressed like this and you don't have the guts, you don't have the unction to say, take that off or turn around. We don't do that here. No, no, because y'all are buddies, right? Friends, it's okay, you understand? Well, now you've lost your job because you failed as a leader. The American uh, yeah. Legion organization said, and I quote, there is no place in the American Legion family for racist activities or behavior. That's what they said, now, obviously that's not true, yeah, right. but that's the statement they released. They also said in a statement to the Post Journal, and I quote, the American Legion was outraged to learn that two individuals wore blackface during a Halloween event at one of our posts. The American Legion Department of New York conducted a full investigation. As a result of the investigation, it received the resignation of the post 556 commander the next day. He is also no longer a member of the American Legion. Good. Here's what we know about the costumed individuals. Not a whole lot, but we got a little bit. The two individuals were not members of the American Legion, but were with the sons of the American Legion. Members of the nonprofit organization include males whose parents or grandparents served in the US military and are eligible for American Legion membership. Though the two were not identified, the American Legion said they also have resigned this week. On Monday, on Monday, the Carol Rock and Gun Club who sponsored this event released a statement on their Facebook page. It says, we would like to acknowledge the controversy. Some people have taken over a recent Halloween costume party. We are a private club which consists of 1100 members of all ethnic groups of which were in attendance that night. The fuck does what? that matter? Wait a minute. I thought you all were going to say something that we gave a damn about. Right. You stated facts of your membership. Right. It is reported that the club later took down the Facebook page. Here is a photo of the history of the costumes worn by these racist individuals who mimic black lawn jockeys. This photo comes from the Jim Crow Museum of Racist memorabilia at Fair State University who addressed statues that depict the, car the caricature in blackface wearing horse racing attire and holding a lamp or a kitchen ring. There you have it. Okay. Wow. Mm.
American Legion always been motherfucking, uh, always been motherfucking racist to me. Well, what y'all think? Yeah. I always got that feeling. Uh oh, hold on. It's a couple of things we don't just uh, discuss on here. I guess we can go to this and we can do that next. Kinder Bueno. I ain't got shit to say about that blackface shit, but that's some bullshit. Everybody knows it's bullshit. They they let motherfuckers. It ain't even nothing you can say. They let motherfuckers who wasn't a part of they shit come in and fuck they shit all up. But they don't even care because it ain't fuck shit up for them. You see what they said? They could give a damn. That just made me want to tell people to go watch Bamboozle. Facts. You stupid. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Bamboozle is that shit. Let's see what we got. It's one of the most powerful things in the world. If a voice can change a classroom, then it can change a school. And if it can change a school, it can change the nation. And if it can change the nation, then it can change the world. Your voice can change the world. But it all starts here. That's a video from 2013 where an almost uh, 16-year-old high schooler named Maxwell Frost clearly not old enough to run for public office yet, was running for class president. Now, of course, the U.S. Constitution sets minimum ages for elected federal officials. For example, to be president, you must be 35 years old. To become a senator, you have to be at least 30. That's actually the age Joe Biden was when he first took office. He was elected at 29. And to be a member of the House, you have to be at least 25 years old. You might remember the last youngest member of Congress was 25-year-old North Carolina Republican Madison Cawthorn, who will not be returning in January. That bitch. Replacing him as the youngest House member is 25-year-old Maxwell Frost, Democrat of Florida, and now a long way from student government. Frost first became politically active. <laughs> My as little young dog done growed up, ain't he? Particularly after the Sandy Hook massacre and the wake of the George Floyd racial justice protests, Frost quit his job as an organizer against gun violence to run for Congress. On Tuesday night, he won the Orlando-based district held by Democrat Val Demings by All just right, over yeah. 19 points. So the vote is still coming in. And joining me now is Congressman-elect Maxwell Alejandro Frost, Democrat of Florida's 10th District. Congratulations on your victory. Of course. Thanks so much for having me. What did you, what did you learn by running for office? You had a contested primary and then a, a, a not as contested general election in a seat yeah. that's heavily Democratic. But you got to start sort of from somewhere. So, like, what, what was the most surprising thing about learning to run for office? I'd say two things, and they both have to do with money. The first one is just how much money it takes to, to win these campaigns. In my primary, we raised $2 million, and we spent $2 million, right? Um, and just learning how much time it takes for call time and, and fundraising and building up a program really showed me how much election reform we need so our candidates can spend more time actually speaking with voters and raising money. Explain to people that are watching what call time is. So call time is when you're calling donors and you're essentially pitching yourself, cold calling people. And you've got like a sheet and a phone, right? Exactly. And we actually did something where we used kind of organizing tactics in our fundraising and I would sit at a table with like literally eight friends we'd all be calling and dialing at the same time they would throw the phone in my face uh, and I would you know talk to somebody when they answered uh, just because we wanted to make sure that the volume of calls was high because we knew we'd have to raise a lot of money because I'm a first time candidate um, and we knew to get our message across we needed the resources to do that right because you also have name recognition right I mean you've got a district where Val Deming is incumbent everyone knows who she is together, but no one knows who they? you are exactly so you're starting at zero yeah we started at zero I mean our first poll had me at three percent we ended up with 35 percent winning it by 10 points and the way that we did that was by docking every door but getting the money we needed to hire a good staff we had a field team four organizers and a field director we spent a lot of money on that and um, i just want to make sure we raised the money to pay a good wage to really walk the walk right in the campaign and get our message across to everybody i want to ask you about walking the walk um i'm uh, 43 years old i've been uh, doing in journalism and political journalism for like 20 years hmm. And even at 43, I'm constantly asking myself, like, is this in line with my values? (laughs) And life is complicated. You make a lot of like, there's a lot of stuff you have to do. Is there a lockbox somewhere or do you have friends or people that are like, I'm going to come to you if you've strayed from the person that I know 
as you enter into this journey? 110 percent, 100. And I've asked them to do that, right? I've said, I stay with me, right? Um, because I need to be checked, right? And a lot of times you do need to be called in uh, because you get into this and it's this whole other world and you want to make sure you're staying true to who you are. And there's different ways to do that, right? I like to ground myself in art a lot and music and, and different things like that. And you're that a drummer, me, is that right? Yeah, I'm a drummer, yeah. And that really keeps me grounded, um, but also the people in my life and really staying one with the <laughs> movement. Um, and for me, that's what we're going to do in Congress. But sometimes the movement's going to want things that you can't deliver, or sometimes you're going to have to tell the movement no. Well, I think that's why, there, you know, there's this whole thing of like co-governance where you're always in lockstep with the movement and they know what you're thinking is, right? And I think that's the most important thing. I think it's less than people thinking, oh, they're going to agree on everything and do everything we want, but more I'll know what he's doing, right? I'll understand the landscape. When you say the movement, what do you mean by that? So uh, stakeholders, especially locally, right? Different organizations. Um, in, in, in Orlando, we have one called Florida Rising, right? We have different organizations that do good work locally and really always being in lockstep with them and talking about what's the plan locally, what can I do on the federal level so we can move together? Because at the end of the day, there's no politician that's going to save all of us, right? This is a movement. This is all of us working together. Organizers, organizations, our leaders, artists, everybody, right? Um, and for me, uh, it's just important that we're always in communication. Do you have orientation coming up soon? Yeah. Um, what's that look like? So this weekend on Sunday, we have a, a Congressional Progressive Caucus orientation, which I'm really excited for. And then we have a week of regular orientation, Thanksgiving break, and then another week of orientation. Then we pretty much have the holidays and swearing ins on the third. It's kind of like school. Are, are there people that you're going to go in, you know, a lot of people will go in having connections through, you know, they've been in the state legislature, so there's someone they've served with. Are there people that you view as mentors have connections to that you're not like walking the cafeteria the first day like yeah, looking around? Definitely. I mean, definitely a lot of members of the Progressive Caucus who helped me out a lot in the primary and I've special place my heart for people who helped me out in the primary because I, you know, it was 10 people ran in that. Um, and so a lot of different members from, you know, Jamie Raskin, uh, Pramila Jayapal, different folks like that. Um, and so excited to go in. I also have a lot of my freshman colleagues going in with me that I'm really excited to serve with people like Greg Kassar and Deli Ramirez and uh, just a lot of great people I'm excited to serve with and and be in you know fellowship with as we get into this well it's great to meet you i've heard a lot about you uh congratulations on being the new youngest member uh maxwell alejandro frost from florida really appreciate it yeah thank you so much that's dope man no mm -hmm. that's real dope yeah that is tight because we definitely need more of us in in there and no. Like he said, shit, we all are going to have the same goal. We know what the movement is. You know what I'm saying? We know what that shit, what, what we, we know what he thinking. And he, and he got a, he got a good, a good, uh, he, I like the way he talked because he ain't sitting up here saying he promising a whole bunch of shit. He's saying, it ain't, you, ain't no one politician going to do this shit. It take everybody right. to get along, you know what I'm saying, to do this shit. You know? All right. Yeah, yeah. This just go. This right here just go along with, with what we was just watching and stuff, which is Z. This was the honestly second time. It's a funny transition. It's a good transition because that's kind of what I wanted to lead into. Is that if you notice, a lot of the stuff, a lot of our politicians and stuff is is getting younger. You know what I'm saying? Which I think that's kind of that's that's the kind of shit we need. You know what I mean? Right. For these younger people to get in, so because they know what's really going on out here. It seemed like to me a lot of these old motherfuckers just sit up in their offices and go to the house and go on dinner dates to their favorite restaurants and go the fuck home and don't really be watching what the fuck going on out here. Right. You know what I'm saying? They in it for the check, not change. Exactly. Oh, that's a shirt, nigga. And he said they in it for the check, not change. Mm -hmm. Highest turnout for young voters in midterm Dream. elections in the past 30 years. I'm going to have Maxwell to hit you with the Tony Spitz. That's a bar. To become the first ever Gen Z member of Congress. <laughs> Sophie Barron, founder and CEO of the Conversationalist, hey, a nonpartisan that nigga platform too. Look at that. to encourage conversation among Gen Z, is here now. Hey. More on that. Sophie, thank you for being here. You predicted a Gen Z wave on this show on Monday. I don't know if you would call this that, but we are seeing high record numbers historically for young voters. What do you think motivated young people to get out to the polls? Diane, thank you for having me. Youth turnout this year was massive. I think young people were motivated by what we talked about last time we spoke. Our future is at stake. The issues that were driving young people to the polls determine their future. And 
I think seeing some of the key races yesterday play out. I think what we're seeing in Georgia is a perfect example of how Gen Z is doing their best to make their voices heard. Gen Z favored Senator Warnock by 29 points. And I think a large reason why we're headed to a runoff in December is because Gen Z showed up. Now, 25-year-old Maxwell Frost from Florida is now the first Gen Z member, projected to be the first Gen Z member of Congress. Why do you think it's important to have someone that young in Congress? I think this win was historic. I spoke to Maxwell this morning. I could feel the excitement in his voice. I think this means that young people will finally be heard. Maxwell knows that there's a lot on his shoulders to represent what it means to be a young American in 2022. And I think this shows that yeah, we're going to have to find too. a way Florida, forward a lot and of Maxwell will be representing be our there, interests. But... What are you seeing were the most important issues for Gen Z voters who came out? The issues that we've been talking about so much this election cycle, abortion, climate change, inflation, gun violence, these are the issues that are motivating young people to make their voices heard. And these are really the issues that impact our day to day lives. Got a nigga and down resources. There too and gonna, uh, I cannot wait Jackson to live in a world that's run that by Gen Z right. and so many other candidates won their races at the state and local levels yesterday. I'm really optimistic for what this means to be able to bring our country back together. Now, the turnout was historically good for this age group, but you're still looking at only about 12 percent of the vote so looking ahead what can be done to get more young voters out to the polls in future elections? I think it all starts with a conversation. This is why I started The Conversationalist, because young people have voices that need to be heard, mm -hmm. and it all starts with us. I think moving forward, everything we've seen that's played out so far in this election goes to show that Gen Z values the issues of integrity, respect, compromise, the issues that are fundamental to our democracy. And the more we include young people in these conversations, the more we're actually going to be able to sustain our democracy. So if you're a, a politician, a business owner, or really anyone who feels they could be helped by reaching out and wants to be part of that conversation, but maybe isn't in the generation, how do you reach out to Gen Z? How do they become a part of that conversation? It all starts with listening. I think so often we go into a conversation trying to put our agenda on someone else or bring someone over to our side, but simply reaching out and asking someone their POV, asking them what matters to them, what drives them to make a difference in our country. That is what will get young people in the room. I think asking questions, staying curious, and finding ways to tie it back to why these issues matter so much to us as a nation. Sophie Barron, it's a great mission and love to have you as always. Thank you. Yeah, that's what's up. Glad y'all young mother, y'all young whippersnappers coming out. Man, we kind of at the end, man. That's about all we got, man. I'm, this Dave is a little, is a little, fa uh, what's the name? And I don't want to, uh, I don't want to hit that because that's definitely going to flag me on that. Um, but, man, it wasn't too heavy of a motherfucking show tonight, y'all. Not too much crazy. There's a lot of crazy stuff going on, man. Um, but I'm glad we got a little positives out of this stuff. That stuff kind of looking all right. It's looking, it's looking like it's trying to get better as far as a lot of this you know this political shit we got we all got going on out here because uh this shit really 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 matters as we get older we realize that it, it kind of do matter because of the things that's going on when we younger and we getting in check we getting in trouble and motherfuckers going to jail and different stuff like that we don't understand why or why the policies is how they are and now when we get older we realizing that it's it's the people that we put in the office that's writing these certain policies, you know what I'm saying? Right. And, and that, those are the things that's controlling our narrative. And we, I think we're so thirsty to put by his dumb ass in office and look at his, he did like the dumbest president we ever had. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, it ain't even, it ain't even about the presidency. I feel you, but it ain't even about the presidency stuff. It's more about your local shit. That I've really been oh, yeah. pushing on. Oh, that. Yeah. Man, like, I'm just saying, like, when they ask this motherfucker a question. Oh, uh, yeah. The type of interview you get is hilarious. Yeah, see, motherfuckers got to remember, too, this nigga old as dirt. He's like 70 years old, too. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, it's like asking your grandpa some shit. He going to stumble 
Pick the wrong dude, man. Man, what, who else we gonna pick? They picked him off of Obama's. Uh, you gonna ask this motherfucker like, "What's the weather like today?" He gonna be like, "Yeah, well, I like hot dogs more than hamburgers, but <laughs> you really can't, you can't put ketchup on, you can't put ketchup on a hot dog without barbecuing it first, you know? And one one million seven hundred billion trillion. <laughs> Man, uh, he be on some weird shit. <laughs> that nigga, oh man! <laughs> oh, that shit funny as hell, man. Yeah, they got that cat off Obama's coattails, man. Yeah, they yeah. did. It, it's it's all an agenda, man. Just like it's some things that I had put up about uh, Obama mm-hmm. and how. He related to George Bush and them. I don't know if y'all knew that. Obama is related to George Bush and them. Huh? All them motherfuckers related some way. Everybody who they let in office is related some type of way. Yeah, like like literally, that's that nigga's like. He used to get, he used to go over there and like get baby like George Bush and them used to babysit this nigga like his. They was in bed with his dad like his dad. Did some motherfucking like business with them, and you know what I'm saying it's great, bro. People don't know, man. Quiet as a cat, bro. Obama is rich as shit, and it ain't because of no presidency. It's because of his grandfather and um they business his they business dealings that they have, and his grandfather left all of the money and all of the shit. No, it's either his dad or his grandfather left all of the shit to him to bury to Barack. Like so, his wife, his wife, his wife rich as fuck too. Well, well, no, I'm just, I don't know nothing about Michelle. I'm just saying this, this shit from Obama. <laughs> Obama, his, his dad, his dad was uh, was he was doing some shit. He he funded his his dad did something, bro. As far as like, I'm gonna look it up, man. Cause I had, I like I said, it, it escaped my mind exactly what he did. But he was selling. He parted something as far as like selling, uh. I don't know if it's wartime shit or if it's munitions. He do he did something. He sold something big, and he was like the nigga for doing that. Yeah, and and he, that's Obama's he, motherfucking like. Yeah, she was richer than him before he got that inheritance. Oh, Michelle was. Yeah. Mm, yeah, that shit crazy. And it's funny how whenever his people's past, like no, they didn't tell you. Notice how they didn't never let that go out, like get out. Yeah. About they didn't let no news get you to tell. Like to, it's real quiet about Obama's inheritance and shit. Like all that shit is real quiet. They don't want you to know he is in covered. Man, that nigga in covered fifty fifty thousand times over. As much money that nigga, I, I, bro. His granddad was like one of the at one time, bro. He was one of the richest men in the in the in the, in the country, like in the like yeah. like he was that nigga, like like a Bill Gates type nigga, but over there, like over yeah. over somewhere in my nigga, like he was he was that nigga, bro. On trade type shit, like he man. Head, but that shit crazy, man. I'm. A, I'm going to take us out with this little what's the name because, you know, Christmas time coming up, y'all. We just did the little bullshit Halloween, seeing them whole ass niggas in blackface and shit, man. But uh, we're going we to end off on this little Christmas joint, man. We're going to let y'all go. You know what I'm saying? We we uh thank y'all for hanging out with us as yeah. always. You know what I'm saying? Here and talk to shit. We're going to see what this last thing is. See what the hell going on. Everybody talking. The iconic Tremont home that was used uh, as a setting of the home, the movie The Christmas Story is up for sale. And it's not oh, just that house either. Selling. There's a sprawling campus of lots uh, that have been acquired over the years. Here's a live picture right now from the Christmas Story website, it looks like. News 5's John Kosick has more tonight from Tremont. It is a piece of Cleveland history that in a relatively short period of time has grown into one of the city's best known tourist attractions, drawing visitors annually from all over the Still the same world. color too. West funny. 11th Street this day though, there is something that is jumping out at tourists even more than the leg lamp for sale signs. I want to buy it. Most were surprised oh, at the sight of the signs, which bitch. you clearly can't miss. Didn't even know that it could be for sale. 
thought it was like a, I don't know, like a state Monument. museum type thing. Or no, it is privately owned, and yes, they can sell it, says Chad Whitmer, the realtor handling the deal. We're putting the house up for sale. Ralph's See, house. It's still the same color. Why? Right. It's time for something new. The uh, owners are looking for a new venture. Um, and, you know, a new chapter in life and move on. And it's not just Ralphie's house. This package includes a total of seven properties they've acquired in this neighborhood over the last 18 years. Mm. It's a whole operation. You know what you see here? There's a museum, the Bumpus's house, um, gift the shop, Bumpus. and parking lots. The success of this whole enterprise pretty much mirrors the success of the movie itself. Remember, it didn't become a cult classic until years after its 1983 release. And in much the same way, this place didn't become a tourist attraction until years after that. In fact, until 2004, it was pretty much an afterthought. The house came up for sale on eBay. I couldn't believe somebody was selling it. That was owner Brian Jones in 2006, telling us how he put in his bid of $150,000 well, from California without ever seeing the place. I bought it within Ooh. a day. I was like, I got to have that. That's really cool. He would pump more than $200,000 more into it, gutting it, and converting it from an up-and-down duplex into the iconic home of Ralphie as it looked in the movie. I just didn't want it to fade away, you know, into, you know and, and be unrecognizable. And in November 2006, the Christmas Story House and Museum opened. Over the next 15 years, Jones would acquire the other properties. It's also been a transformation of the neighborhood itself, fueled in part by the museum's foundation that raises this funds for the Christmas hero. Story 5 and 10K runs they provided Young grants for exterior renovation projects in this immediate neighborhood, an effort that in its first seven years raised over $620,000. Johnny Patina says the for sale signs made him sad. What do you hope happens? Just like it is. Nothing changes. Nothing changes. <laughs> that will be up to the buyer. The new owner is going to uh, be able to take it in whatever direction they see fit. You know, it's hard to say what that is, but... You know, the hope is that they carry this on and actually and make it bigger and better and make it an even bigger attraction for the city of Cleveland. As for the asking price, Whitmer wouldn't say, other than to label it pretty significant. Yeah. In Cleveland, John Kasich. Yeah, he's selling that shit for some meals. Uh, we can only hope that house stays as is. Mm -hmm. Oh, life moves fast. Yeah. One day you're playing kick the can with kids named Flick and Schwartz. Oh, yeah, I'm going to grab that. I'm going to have to watch that. That's dope. Cry. That's hard that they redid that shit. Yeah. Even if it ain't good, it's still dope because all them motherfuckers in it. <laughs> yeah. And they grown. That's crazy. That's hard though, man. But hey, shit. Ralphie. Hey. Huh? <laughs> Who Ralphie looked the exact same? Don't he? Just old as hell. <laughs> <laughs> that shit funny, man. Yeah, but that house though, you know they selling that bitch for some meal. They say he wouldn't even say how much they was. Selling. That nigga, man. Shouts out to that dude from Cali that bought that shit. That nigga found out that shit was up for sale and was like, "I'm finna go buy it." And I know why because when he seen that it was up for sale for a hundred thousand dollars, let me tell you something that's funny as hell. Here, somebody would be like. $100,000 for a house, for that kind of house, oh, that's too much. In California, a motherfucker gonna be like, 100000 for a house? Why it's so cheap? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, when he found out it was that house, I can see, you see how young he is, when he found out it was that house, that nigga bought that shit. Fuck buying a house out here, I'm gonna go buy this shit, and then I'm, for, I'm gonna flip it. And then he just said, I'm gonna turn it into a museum. And he bought all the other houses around that bitch. Yep. Turned that bitch into a museum and turned, he flipped, they said he flipped over six hundred some thousand dollars in the first year. Mm. Shots out to that man for having that idea, man, to do that shit. That was raw as fuck. Yeah. That was a fucking flip, dog. And you know he's selling that bitch for some stupid meals. Mm -hmm. Because all he finna do is look at what kind of profit that that shit turned Because they just talking about from one aspect from that house They got a gift shop They got all that other shit on that bitch You know how much that gift shop going Man, he probably making his own motherfucking memorabilia He probably making his own Christmas story shit Yeah Shirts, all kind of shit girls. He can sell one of them Rare Rider BB guns for like 600 a piece uh well he could if they wasn't on Amazon for sixty bucks. <laughs> uh, 
They is on Amazon for sixty, but them motherfuckers cheap. They well, they ain't cheap, yeah. but you but they 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 they're obtainable. That lamp is too. You could buy that lamp too. Yeah, Cause they got it from there. Right, exactly. They probably you know the if it's on there for yeah, you right. Cause they go, I know they're gonna sell it for at least a hundred. Cause they're gonna say I got it from the what's the name. You right. I got this shit from the motherfucking museum. Mm -hmm. Just to say they got it from there. I know they selling all kind of shit. Them lamps. I know they got the little lamps up there. The fragilities. They probably selling them lamps for a band. Knowing, mm -hmm. them, bitches, knowing them bitches come from China for 30 bucks. Mm -hmm. Just making a killing, man. It's all about enterprising. It's all about that hustle, man. But, man, y'all definitely, man, um... Get up with us, man. Y'all already know, man. Appreciate y'all for hanging out, man. Um, Annabelle's next weekend, 26. Let them know. Let them know, uh, Drip. Come rock with us at 7.30. Go on the event, Brighton, and cop your ticket. Cop your ticket. Video that shit, man. Video that shit. Yeah, uh, we was... Who gonna be live streaming? Uh, drip. Uh, I don't know, but I'm, I'm trying to have my dude come down and video. I don't know who's gonna be live streaming. But yeah, okay. get that to me. You need to set your uh your one shit up. What my camera? And that uh yo uh what's that shit called? What's that? The uh the one shit the live stream straight to Facebook. Oh, you talking about my portal? Yeah, your portal. I don't even know where that shit at, cuz. You right, I can do that shit too, huh? Set that portal with that bitch will follow us and everything. Mm-hmm. If, especially if the lighting good. Mm-hmm. Get the get the little side stage or back, yeah, side stage or get it from we might be able to get it from the front, like, you feel me? Oh, that should be hard. Let me see what's up with that. Let me find that bitch, bro. You got me look, turning, looking, looking now, nigga. So much shit. Here. <laughs> Let me find that shit, cuz. But shit. Any, did Tony got a release date for his shit yet? The critic? Oh, he done muted his shit. But y'all already know, man. Tone Spitz, man. Got a shit called The Critic on the Way. Um, in my own lane coming soon. Gallimaufry. I believe it's out now. Um, on YouTube. Um, and I think Cuz use... Um, what's the shit you be using? What's the shit, Cuz? I forgot the site, man. I think it's beat tapes or something. Beats. Man, how oh, he muted his mic. <laughs> anyway, man, Gallimarfi on YouTube, man. Um, my own lane coming soon. The critic coming out soon. Um Iceberg Flame. What you wanna yes. drop on them, man? Yeah, we going down for that undefeated season this weekend, man. Checking on all core, yo. Oh yeah, you know that's gonna be a, a cakewalk. Yeah, man. But you know, trying to get that sweat championship again down here, man. Who, who haven't y'all stepped on this year? Mm. Mm. <laughs> who haven't y'all mm. stepped on this year? To me, you know mm. what I'm saying? Every time, every time y'all, uh, y'all, you know what I'm saying? Jackson the win. They the man undefeated. Yeah, man. Man. Yeah, hey, man. and your other boys is kicking ass too, nigga. Why you playing? Who? Your cowboys, nigga. Man, we all right. Man, all right. listen, man. you know what's funny? I had a conversation the other day, man, with my partner. I said, man, what's funny about the cowboys is that people was quick to talk all that motherfucking shit last year. And I'm not a cowboys fan. But yeah. we like my mom, like my dad and them is. But it's funny. I always know this shit. Like people talked all that shit last year. You know what I'm saying? The playoffs, all that. The memes, motherfuckers crying. But it's crickets now this year, and the Cowboys got one of the best fucking seasons. Oh, 
like, but nobody wants to say nothing. Like, where all that energy at now? That's how it is with us, man. That's wild, bro. Good, don't nobody want to speak on it. Mm-hmm. Hey, everybody still beating them down, yo. But we finna find out because it's that critical part of the season now, man. Right, most it's definitely. Dak done had his worst game. Now you need to bounce back from that shit. And yeah, you know, most definitely, yeah. most definitely, man. We it's shit. coming. It's definitely mm-hmm. coming, man. There's a lot of shit going on out there, man. A lot of good sports, man. Um, and them Lakers meet. Them Lakers finally had that meeting. They had that shit out, so we finna see what's finna happen behind that. Yeah, yeah, because they had a couple good games. They had a couple good games. But they just had that team meeting, and they aired all that shit out, man. So Right. I'm waiting to see. I, I, I saw the um, update pop up on the screen where um, – Davis said something about the meeting. I'm waiting to see that shit when he get off here. But, mm. uh, yeah, well, they, they they had that team meeting yesterday, yo. Right. Oh, yeah. Everybody done sure. shit out. So, we're going to see. Already. We're going to see. But, yeah, man. Yeah, man. Hell, yeah, man. Well, shit, y'all know what it is, man. Like we say, man, appreciate it, y'all, for rocking with us, man. Uh-huh. Um, we're going to definitely get it, y'all. Don't forget, come out, Annabelle's 26. Um, man, shit, it is what it is, man. Peace. Peace. Yeah, we gonna holler at y'all, man. I got an early day in the morning. Oh? I heard that shit, man. Ain't nothing wrong with it. But yeah, episode 40 next week. Y'all hit the ass next week, yo. And I'll bust the ass upside the head. Yeah, I'm gonna, do a, I'm gonna do a Facebook one. Matter of fact, Facebook Live is... Well, I'm gonna be on live Facebook on, on for episode 40. We're gonna do that. We're gonna do it. Because I do it every...